Welcome back. To join me inside the Concrete Chieftain, for those of those, for those of you that don't know what that is, it's a tank that we got, it's a Chieftain tank that we got a little while ago, probably two years ago now, and it was a gate guard and the back end was full to the brim where the engine bay and gearbox would be with concrete. The previous owner got a lot of it for the concrete out and we got the rest out. We found that the gearbox mounts were cut off with the gas, which wasn't great. And in the previous videos, if you look back in the Concrete Chieftain playlist, you'll see that we welded the new gearbox mounts in and we fitted a gearbox. Uh, and basically what we're up to doing now is when they chipped the concrete out, they actually damaged some of the wires, believe it or not, in the hull that go to the gearbox, that control the gearbox. So on the Chieftain, it's electronically controlled. So what I'm doing is an incredibly horrendous job of trying to trace the wiring from the gearbox area back inside the fighting compartment under the turret that goes to this main connection box here, the fuse break box or whatever you want to call it. Now, everything in this tank has been completely submerged in water because when it was left as a gate guard, not only did they fill it up with concrete, they left all the bungs in. So the water level rain, kept raining on it and it just filled up like a bucket. You can see here on the on the turret there's evidence everywhere of a, of a watermark you can see where the water's been you see all this this oily grease so oil and grease is lighter than water so it all rose to the top which has put this oily greasy film on everything that got to water level so the water would have been pretty much if i was in it now i'd be up to my nose that's how much water's in it it gets to the point where it actually leaks out the driver's hatch, which you can tell it's been doing on this. So as a result of that, it probably hasn't done the electrics any good, but because it's put a film of oil everywhere, and that oil of film has actually protected some of these electrical connections. Normally on Chieftains that have been parked up for years, these corrode, and then they come to the point where they, they damage the both ends when you try and undo them. Whereas these have actually, believe it or not, in really good condition. And the wires on military vehicles of this age were really good. So obviously electrical boxes that are filled up with water will be scrap. Now I do have a fair bit of spares. The vehicle electronics is fairly basic on this. You have your main engine start panel, you have your dashboard, and then you have your gear change selector. And obviously this box here, which is the main box. And all we're focused on the Chieftain, on this particular Chieftain, we're not trying to make the turret all work electronically. There's a lot missing. But for now, we're just going to try and get the vehicle electrics working to the point where we can actually go up for all the gears in the gearbox and it would be, be nice if it starts on the button. But whatever happens, I'm not going to be beaten and I'll make my own system if this one won't work. But I believe that we can get it to work. So I'm going to trace this wire back to the engine bay. I've took all the panel and cowling off. Here's the base plate if you want to show people its stats. Mm. It's that. Yeah, it's that <laughs> kill streak. It's, yeah, it's battles, right? That that panel was here, which covered some of the connections here. I've had to take that off. There's a bit of skirting that protects the wires that go to the back from obviously the, the basket spinning around. That was a real nightmare to get off. There's all these brackets here that hold the wire wires against the whole wall so they don't get caught. We've got all them off. I'm very greasy. And what we're going to do now, we're going to get Seb in the back, and he's going to tug on the damaged wire that goes to the gearbox control unit. And hopefully, I'm pretty sure it's this wire here, and I do have a spare. You'll see in the back just how damaged it is in a minute. But we're going to try and replace the, that cable. And then what I might do before we go any further is actually stick some power on it and just see what lies up and what doesn't. We could buy ourselves up, but we'll see. So we'll come back in a minute when we've worked out for definite if this is the cable. Right at the back here, that's where all the wires come through from the fighting compartment. It's where the oil tank goes. Yeah, so these are the cables, and as they come through, they obviously just come through the cables. Now, these go all the way through into that back corner, that's where the gearbox controller sits up there. And as you can see, there's just no hope really of doing anything. We do have a lot of spare cables. So hopefully we'll find that way, if that's the right one. We can just unplip, uh, unplip it and then uh, replace the cable and we should be good to go. See yep, that? yep. Is that the one? 
Yeah, I'll pull it back, make sure. Ready? Yeah. Okay, cool. Right, well, I'll undo it this end and yeah. pull it out your, your way, I think. Okay, dope. So that is the cable, is work. Just undo it from in there and we'll remove the cable. So it was as I guessed, it was this cable. It is undoing nicely. I didn't want to guess, I wanted to be sure. I mean, I didn't rewire Chieftains in the 60s, so I'm not that clued up on just learning as I go. Ow, that really broke my nail. Good job I don't care. Right, hopefully that'll be off in a second. There was another thin cable with it, isn't there? That other armoured cable. Yep. I don't think that's damaged, but if I've got a spare, I think while we're at it, we'll change both. Nice. And then we know that uh, it's good. everything is okay. <sighs> I don't think inside that box is too good. No, but we do have spares. Yeah. I did have a quick look in there earlier and it uh, wasn't nice. But your wiring does not look very mint inside that box. Ooh. Hard to get the camera in to see it, but yeah. And that is not filling me with great confidence. Battle links across. No, no, it's not, it's not been touched. Right, so that is the gear, one of the gearbox main controller wires. Okay, let's try and thread this out so we don't disturb all the cable. Good job there's not a million wires down here. And, and it's all really a clean. Burnout, it would not be ideal in a cheap one. I like how every cable's white, so that just, you know, when you do have a fault, it's like, oh yeah, just replace the white cable. Excellent. There's a million white cables. I don't know how it comes through the bulkhead, but I suppose we shall find out. That is, that is off. I'll go to the back now, and I'll try and take the bulkhead gland out. I'm assuming that's how you get that head through. Because if not, I think I'm just gonna get the angle grinder out. I'm not wiring all that. Bring the hammer and chisel. People will be going, no, nope, it's not how you do that. <coughs> no, it's not. You'd be absolutely correct. They would be correct, but uh, that's not how we work around here. You know, on your Sherman tank, you just put a, put a simple engine in and there's no wires. Not quite the same on a Chieftain. You know, people think restoring the Second World War bit is difficult. Positive, so. negative, and a nurse job. Yeah, well, when you start your Sherman tank, you can just chuck your battery in the canal. You don't need any wires, you don't need any electrics. Whereas on the Chieftain, it's a little bit more complex. <laughs> Believe it or not. But don't forget, when you're talking to people about that, the, Sh the Sherman tank is a rare tank, despite there being 50,000 of them made. And what was the Chieftains? 1,900? Might have been like 3,000, but it's still not a lot. No, no, but remember, Shermans are more rare. Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> this keeps stabbing me. This is really not cool. Let's move that somewhere out of the way. Just cut it off. We don't need it, right? <laughs> I'm going to try and knock. <laughs> There's still literally concrete up there, look. Hold on, come on. Huh? To move the no. Look. So these are the wires where they come through the bulkhead. And there's the, the gland to stop oil and water that really doesn't work coming through. And I'm going to chipple some of the concrete off. Break concrete off to change your wiring loom on your tank. That's an all-time low. It's a very good band as well. Is it? <laughs> a band? An all oh, an all-time low. I don't know anything about that. What songs do they sing? Not ones that you'd like. No? What's, no. It, what's it about? Emos? Yes. <laughs> you could have guessed that, the name of the band. Clues in the name. We might as well bully a new group of people on the channel. <sighs> it's 
coming. So is Christmas, but it is coming. There's still all concrete to get out of. I like how there's every other. Look, that wire was literally held. I'm just showing everyone which one. Yeah, it's all right. I've ripped it out now. <laughs> I think we're about the point where you can take that rubber thing out of it. Concrete bit holding the wires from coming out. I've no idea how that comes out, but gland, I imagine it's going to be a real pain in the backside. So, the first thing we're going to do is keep the pitch. Of course, that's just absorbing it. Well, we need to do plan B. I don't know how we get that. That's another band, isn't it? Is it plan B? You wouldn't know because they're not suicidal. Joke. I'm going to do one of the many ammo bins, say ammo bin, it's the uh, charge bag bin. charge bin to gain access because of course the rubber glam seal is bolted on and of course the bolts are this side down there where you can't get at so I can't even change the wires without taking all these out. Now these bins do not come out of the turret without taking the commander's lid off or probably take the whole turret off the hole. I don't really want to have to do that. That's getting a bit too major for my liking. So I'm just going to see if I can unbolt it a bit and move it to one side, which I'm sure it won't allow me to do that because that would just be too easy. But if we can get that gland seal off, it does look like we'll be putting new cables on. And I know then the new wiring, there's a fair chance that that um, gearbox may work electronically as it should. Right, so I've undone them. I can't see anything else that holds it, but I can guarantee there will be. I think we're gonna need a bar in here next, so. Yep. Whether I can get down enough, get my hands in there enough to just undo that gland seal is another thing. I know I'm thin, but we're talking impossibilities down there. Let's see that. Too. Why did they have to build these so well? Uh, that does not look easy at all. Mm. I wonder if with the bar we can make this one move. Is there's nowhere to move it to this one you know what i mean like okay we turn it a bit where's that getting us nowhere <laughs> god what, what were they thinking when they built these everyone's saying that chieftain's junk it's so overbuilt you know yeah they didn't get the engine right initially i don't think but uh, the rest of the tank is I can't. How much do these things cost? Right. You'll be pleased, I think. Oh no, it's got stuck. What's it stuck on? Just for everyone's entertainment, look at the position that you're in there. That is Come all on. the room that you've got to be doing this. Yeah. Right. I, I had got one off. Yeah. I was going to show you it, but, but I've dropped, dropped it. But I'm not going to lie. This gland seal is not going back on. <laughs> I think expanding foam will be the answer. I need a break because that's hurting my arm. Right, that is one off. So one bolt, an hour later, and one serious injury, and we're not even anywhere close to doing it. I don't think that I'm. Right, go on, knock, knock it out. Keep going. Yes. What a thing. God, that was a nightmare. Hopefully now, Seb, yep. you should be able to gently pull that cable. Just pull the white one and we'll see if we can get it. That's it. Oh, yes. Go on. Careful. It's coming up to the head now. Here's where it will get stuck. Keep going. Just 
Quizlet a bit. Just wrap round cables, one minute. Let me just let it go back a bit. Put, push it to me. Yep. Out, not too much. <sighs> right, now try and pull it through. Pull it through. Yes! yes! Woo! Right, so this is the bad cable. God, it's a fair old length, isn't it? Okay, right. Where's the one that we think it might be? That one. Pass that into Greg. Let's see how long this is. This is the new cable. Let's see if the lengths look at all similar. This is a brand new old stock piece. It's looking close. <laughs> it's looking very close. That's so long, isn't it? I tell you what, I reckon it's the one. There you go. Bloody hell, we've got a brand new old stock cable. I'm pretty pleased with that. Yeah. Okay, so now we need to take the other damaged cable out with the armour around it to see if we've got a replacement one of them and fit them in. And then that is the so nightmare job done. The no, not yet. Through the head now, so it may be, may get a little tight. Yeah. That's it. There we go. That's for the fuel pump. Fuel pump. And there. Uh, How big is that? The armoured one now, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is another one that when they were taking all the concrete out, gone straight through it and crushed it in a few places. So while we've got all the boxes spared, let's just see if there's another one. Careful because this end's just got a 90 on it, so all right. Very gently. A 90 on the end? Yeah. yeah. Good. Because the spare one does. Yeah. It doesn't. Does. Oh good. I'm stuck. It. Was it they say deep breaths and push? <laughs> Spit on it first. Can you see it there? Yeah. That's it, got it. There you go. Show us what you've got. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say, will we doing that one now? Yeah. Are you pulling right now? No, no, not yet. I'm just hanging with it. Join in there, that's the only thing. Right. Pull in now. So you're meant to push. Yeah. Definitely push. Don't push back. Is it? Yeah. That's why I keep going wrong. Feel first. So, so it's for the phone at the back of the tank, the infantry, the infantry phone. So it's really important then? Very important. Let's change your power at it. See, that's work. I said it looked like BT. Bottom's without the phone. Yeah, hello. That's going through now. Now we can order the... Oh yeah, as soon as you take the connector off as well, it's comms. That's all the bad wiring out. Yeah? Now we've got to go through what we've got that's good. But well, there's still two more wires sticking out. What, bad ones? Ooh. Okay, I'll get back in and see what they are. <laughs> Yay! It goes, it follows the whole main loom under this box and it looks like it goes all the way to the front of the hull uh, near the driver's feet for the looks of things. So I'm just going to tie that up and that'll be something that will uh, that's a bridge we'll cross when we get to it not the stop is it 
Now we've got those cables out that are all damaged, I'm quite tempted to add some power and see what lives up and what doesn't. This feels proper minging in here. Yes. See how wet the seat cushion is. Very, very wet. Mm. Nice. <laughs> Oh yes. Oh wow. <laughs> oh look where the water's been and sat in it. That does not look good at all. Well, let's see what happens when we try and power it up. Okay, we're gonna connect power for the first time. No. Took out all that bad wiring at the back. Hmm. Interesting. That is probably the firewire horse going off at the back. <clears throat> okay, so using the Leatherman. I undid the fuse for the fire wire, it's there, and that is stopped. That's infernal horn. They tell me that we're on fire, we're not on fire. So I can hear now, when you click this, if you listen, something is clicking back here. Things are trying to work, which is quite interesting. After a bit of a struggle, I got the dashboard out and you can see it's in a terrible state. So that's your gear changer, tells you what gear you're in. That's your turret indicator, tells you where the barrel's facing. That's your engine oil, that's engine water temperature, I think. Seems to be gauge missing, RPM, speedo, and then your high beam, low beam, and a few other bits. And I imagine all of them are absolutely knackered because this isn't a sealed unit. So water's got in there and uh, not done it any favors. <laughs> so one thing I've done before I discard that old dashboard is take the old speedo cable off because there's nothing wrong with that that still turns okay but you can see look at this gauge i think the whole tank was submerged in water for that long water has slowly made its way into all the watertight bulkheads that gauge has even fallen off bless her she's in a state right so i've been to the spares and i've got my second best dashboard it's got a splash speedo but have many new speedos so I'm just going to swap that out. It's got an electronic one, which I've not seen before. Someone in the comments will probably know why. Most of them are all mechanical, so I'm going to put a mechanical one back in this. And there's a couple of bulbs missing, which I shall put in as well, because I've got some spares of them. We'll fit it in and we'll see if anything works. A bit better. All the test lights are working. Turret seems to be actually pointing where the turret is pointing. That's pretty good. Oh, does the RPM move? Coolant goes right up to max. That must be earthing out somewhere. No, that's connected at the minute. We're making a bit of progress. I pull the new cables through. <laughs> Engaging 
get this all neater a bit later on. Right, there we go. Plug them in and we're done. Okay, right, now we've got the two gearbox wires back on. That now means that we can oh, fit the oil tank that fits in this corner. Let me get down. Which is the main engine oil tank, which will fit there. I'll obviously tie the cables back to the hull. That can go in. And then we can trial fit the engine and see just how far out the, the gearbox is and, and see if it's going to work or not. So now that's the cables changed. What I need, but I can't find it, is the gearbox module that bolts in this corner here that those plugs go to. And then the gearbox wires will plug in. And then now I've got the dashboard working, I can run through the gears to see if it's showing on the, on the gauge in there. But can't do that until I find that. But it does mean that we can put the sump back in and uh, then eventually fit the engine in. Next job. Easy. That's all I can do tonight, it's starting to get dark. I'm gonna put the jump pack on charge. Call it a night.